Welcome to The Politics Show. In this week's programme, battleships Ahoy, Liverpool and Southampton square up for the final fight over the lucrative cruise market. We have a report from both cities. And why some say the government's plans to tighten up housing benefit rules could worsen the region's fostering crisis. Now today in a special programme we join forces with our colleagues in the south of England to consider a battle raging in the normally sedate world of cruise liners. Over the last few years an increasing number of ships have been docking in Liverpool but while they can stop they're not allowed to begin or end their cruise there. Well Liverpool is campaigning to change all that and the government's expected to make a decision in the next few weeks. Well our political editor Arif Ansari is on the Liverpool waterfront now. Hello Arif. Annabelle, it's during the summer months that those big ships come up here along the waterfront and let those rich tourists come out into Liverpool. Estimated that this year they brought in about £5 million. So there's all to play for here. The problem is that when Liverpool got its cruise terminal built, it cost £18 million, and most of that came from the government and Europe. Now, what they can't do is use state aid to be for unfair competition. Now what Liverpool's saying is, hang on a minute, we're willing to pay that money back and become an equal challenger on the high seas. The White Star Line, Cunard. Liverpool was the world's premier port in the age of the liner, but its maritime domination was gradually eroded. There was a decision made just before the First World War to move the main services across the Atlantic to Southampton. There are a number of reasons for this. Probably the main one was that it was easier to get to, perhaps for the wealthy people. It was the change that started really as Southampton grew as, uh, you know, as an emigration port, etc., and for the growing market in luxury travel. The very early days of the cruise ships, that's when it started, this, tr this traditional rivalry. I've never been in here before, but you can see these shadows from the past. We're in the old Cunard building, one of Liverpool's famous three graces. And it was from here, the fifth floor boardroom, that the company commissioned Queen Mary and controlled the great ocean-going liners of the age. Since then, Cunard's moved to Southampton, along with the vast bulk of the cruise market. Now Liverpool's campaigning to win a larger share of it back. The Queen Mary might have long ago departed British waters, but her flag still flies in Crosby. It was presented to Gervais Stringer, who's been on about a dozen cruises. Well, I suppose the very first um, maiden, the maiden voyage of the Queen Mary too would be the... You're on the first exciting. time ra what, round the world? Round the world, world cruise, yes. And this... Is this? Yeah, yes, these are some of the mementos from that particular trip. So that is obviously San Francisco. That's entering one of the famous Golden Gate Bridge, yes. But having to board in Southampton was less enjoyable. It is an immense problem and it does deter persons from um, going on some of these cruises. More people from the north would be willing to uh, come to Liverpool than go to Southampton. This is the cruise terminal and we're walking now along the landing stage where the cruise liners pull up. The modest terminal was opened in 2007, for many visitors their first glimpse of Liverpool. It's attracted the big ships and success has floated ambition. So at the moment, whilst the visitors that do come spend quite a lot of money whilst they're here, they're only here for the day, they don't stay overnight. So it would obviously uh, multiply the uh, economic impact for us if we, if we could do that. Uh, the other thing is it would create more jobs because there would be uh, lots of um, servicing of the um, additional passengers that were coming through the cruise terminal if we got uh, turnaround status. But this week a letter's emerged from the European Commission suggesting that it would want some of its original eight and a half million pound investment back. They would have a reasonable case that if there's a partial refund to the UK authorities, there should be a parallel partial refund to the community authorities. So uh, I, I, I've, I've no idea how it'll come out or how much, what percentage that repayment might be, but 
they do seem to have a, a reasonable position looking at their legal texts. That, of course, is still being decided. But if Liverpool wins, many people here would feel the ships have returned home. Well, that's the perspective from Liverpool, but Southampton's reacted as angrily as a cruise passenger being told the kitchen's closing. Time to pick up on their arguments now. Here's my colleague in the south of England, Peter Henley. On the south coast, Southampton has invested nearly £40 million to meet the growing demand for the cruise trade. Ships like this one, the Queen Mary 2, bring in more than a million pounds every time they start or finish a journey here in the port. When a cruise ship comes in, an army of workers springs into action. Dozens of stevedores moving the luggage, lorry loads of fresh food and drink from local suppliers, coach firms, taxis. The wages earned each time a cruise ship docks in Southampton are the lifeblood of the city's economy. And new businesses have developed around the wealthy passengers' requirements. Americans especially, they like travelling back, you know, backwards and forwards on the Queens and they tend to bring their tuxedos and posh frocks, but when they get to the UK and they may be going to another part of Europe, they don't need those. So we often send those back home to a relative or hold them until it's necessary to send them back home. The idea that Liverpool could take Southampton's cruise line work angers Colin. If they're going to a growing market, why do they need subsidy to enter it? I mean, we've set a new business up. We haven't you know, taken a subsidy out to do this. We are going to build and pay for this out of our profits eventually. Southampton port owners, ABP, have shelved plans for a £30 million fifth terminal. They were worried that what they see as unfair competition from Liverpool City Council could hit them hard. The whole issue is not complicated. The issue is about, is it privately funded or is it state funded? Ports in general, owned by private companies like Peel, like Associated British Ports, we're private companies, we should be investing in cruise terminals and buying new cranes and building new keys. That's what we do. We don't get any grant aid in Southampton to do that. And that should be the case in Liverpool as well. The Queen Mary 2 has been in port for just a few hours and now passengers are arriving for the trip to New York. How would you feel about sailing to New York from Liverpool rather than Southampton? No, no, I prefer Southampton. With home of cruising, the Isle of Wight, the Solent, all the, all the yachts and boats, it's always been here. A bit like afternoon tea, if you like, you know, it's part of, part of the experience for us. And, and Liverpool does afternoon tea. Well, I know, but Liverpool's... Um, I don't know, I've, I've never really considered it, to be honest with you. I don't think any of us fully understand why the government even considering this. Remember, remember the previous Labour administration turned this application down. It was only a matter of weeks after the coalition were elected that Liverpool resubmitted a further application. I cannot believe that a Conservative-led uh, administration would even contemplate doing this. As a deep water, sheltered port with close connections to the continent and a short trip to the Mediterranean, Southampton has many natural attributes, but it's worried about competition from Liverpool. Well, with a government decision expected soon, it's all to play for, but who will emerge the winner? Well, we thought we'd get the leaders from both city councils to argue their case. So joining me now from Liverpool Waterfront is Councillor Joe Anderson. And from Southampton, we have Councillor Royston Smith. Thank you both for joining us. If I can start with you, Councillor Smith. We've heard both arguments there in our films. But what is your real complaint here? Is it that Liverpool could benefit unfairly from having public money? Or is it that you want to keep the monopoly on cruises in this country? No, it's nothing to do with monopoly. I am but a humble leader of the council, not a private businessman. And I look out for the people that I represent and I want to protect their jobs. And I don't mind if people want to compete. I think that's healthy and it's good for the consumer. But they must compete on a level playing field. Southampton has no public subsidy to its port, to its cruise business, and Liverpool should be exactly the same. It should be private money competing with private money. Nothing more than that. So if Liverpool paid back all the public funding that it has received from Europe and from the UK government, would you then be happy for them to get these turnaround rights? I'd be perfectly content with that, but we have to acknowledge as well that this is still public money. Liverpool City Council will be using public money to pay back other public money. What we're saying is that the private operator that 
will benefit from this in profits into their private company, they should be the ones that pay for the terminal. It's straightforward. Public money should never be used to compete with private sector investment. Okay, Councillor Anderson, you were given um, this money on the proviso that it, this was just a visiting port and you're now trying to change those conditions. Well, we believe rightly so. Um, the market is a grower market. Liverpool has uh, a facility, an antiquated facility, which uses the lock system here in Liverpool, which means that we can't use some of the, uh, we can't allow some of the big ships to come in and visit the city. So we want to use the facility you knew that, that we've got. that when you got, got the money, Councillor yes, Anderson. things have changed. We got the money over five years ago. The problem is, is that we're offering to pay that money back. We've negotiated with government what we believe to be a fair price. It's a depreciation of the 8.5 million we got. We're offering to pay 5.3 million back. And when Councillor Smith talks about the private sector, the private sector aren't uh, involved or engaged this, in this at all. It's run by Liverpool City Council and it is Liverpool City Council that will continue to run it. And I'd like Councillor uh, Smith to explain where he believes the private sector are involved in this because he keeps making these statements and okay. they're quite false. So as far as we're concerned I'd ask him the question. If we paid this subsidy back, is he going to leave Liverpool alone? Okay, because well, we're let's... willing to do that. We have offered that to government and he, he asks us to pay back the European funding. Well, the fact is, Europe don't want that money back. Europe aren't asking me for that money well, back and it... I'm not going to go knocking on okay, Europe's okay, door. Okay, I'm just going to interrupt you there, there Councillor Anderson, because isn't it true that the Commission has said that they will look very seriously at asking for some money back if the condition is changed? The, the, the Commission, the European Commission, have not said that to us. We've actually approached the European Commission. And look, let's be perfectly well, clear about this. I, Other I ports around the country have had European funding. But and, Councillor and, Anderson, and I'm sorry would, to interrupt. If we have to pay it back, so should they. OK, well, let me bring in Councillor Smith. Is it right that the, the European Commission has said that they would look, if there was a change of use, a financial correction could not be ruled out? That sounds to me like they'd, they'd ask for some money back. Absolutely. They have said that, and they would say that, because this money was match funding. You had the regional development agency, eight and a half million pounds, and you had a 10 million pound investment from the European Commission. And that was on the basis of match funding. So if uh, Liverpool have to pay back the RDA money, the government money, the UK government money, then the Commission will quite rightly look at their match funding, and that is uh, only to be expected. What we're saying simply is that if a private sector company, Peel Ports, were to make money from this, then they should pay for it, okay. not the public sector. Okay, um, at the risk... aren't going to make any money from it. I keep saying that to him, it's just that he's not listening. And with regards to, to the European Union, I would hope that Councillor Smith would not wish to interfere in trying to force a local authority in financially difficult times to pay back money to, to Europe when they've not asked us for it. If Europe come and speak to me and Anderson talk to listening. me about it, then, then we'll discuss it with them. Okay, but at Councilor the moment they haven't the done we're not trying to make Liverpool pay it back. We're trying to make Peel Ports pay it's it back. Southampton being greedy. That's a what private it is. sector company should pay it back. That's what we're saying. Southampton we're not saying have Liverpool. 75%. We're saying a Try private not to speak sector over company each other, please, competing with another private sector company in Southampton. Southampton have seventy-five percent of the cruise line of trade. Deliberately okay. misleading. Okay. At the risk of sounding like a parent telling off uh, <laughs> children, uh, uh, <laughs> couldn't you just share? I mean, really, is there not enough business out as there for said, both of you? Councillor Smith, you answer me. There is, there is plenty of business out there, and we are more than happy. Why would not we be happy for cruises to start and finish in Liverpool? That has nothing to do with it. You've never heard me make any comments about any other town at any other time. Well, apart, we from, apart from, let me finish, Councillor Anderson, apart from when you're going to use a public subsidy to compete with a private sector company. And that will, put, that will put ports. private sector investment okay. at risk. And associated Can British ports have been complaining okay. all the time. Council That's a private company, and as far as we're concerned, we are willing to sit down and talk about the subsidy that we've had, the state aid okay. subsidy, Councilor and Anderson. we'll discuss it with people and not with Southampton. Joe, if you do have to pay back any of this money, how is Liverpool going to afford this? I know you alluded to that. You have only this week said that you've got to make 50 million cuts. You're looking at getting rid of school mills. 
milk, free school milk. How will you fund it? Is it worth carrying on with this? And that's why it's obscene when one council is trying to force another in difficult times when we're trying to get ourselves out of the recession to force us to give money back to the Exchequer. That's why it's obscene. But we've negotiated with the government uh, what we believe a fair price based on depreciation. If you buy a new car for £10,000, the following year it won't be worth £10,000. So we believe we've negotiated a fair price with government. And as far as the European Union is concerned, Councillor Royston Smith and other people should butt out and let the European Union discuss with us a repayment back if that's what they wish. Councillor Joe Anderson in Liverpool and Councillor Royston Smith in Southampton, thank you both very much. You're welcome.